Hello again. Today I'm going to develop a stack in a test-driven way. The other thing I'll also will do is make a design, a very simple design using pen and paper. And to do that, we'll switch over to pen and paper. Here we have paper and a pen, and it's what, what we are going to design with. So what we need is an idea of what the stack is, so that you can very easily see the operations that are allowed and can design and develop from there. What we are going to do is make a Java stack in which you can put everything we like, and that is a, a gener generic stack. Generic, generic stack. In Java you write it like this. You have a class, of course, class stack, that's the name of the class, and then to define that you want to implement, uh, insert any kind of elements and take out any kind of elements, you call it a stack with a type parameter, type E. Now what is a stack actually? A stack is something like a pile on which you can place things on top, on top, on top, or remove from top, from top, from top, and like this. Say this is a surface on which you put a thing, on which you put a thing, on which you put a thing. These putting on is called the push operation. Push. Putting something onto the stack, like so. There's another operation that is allows you to look at the top of the stack, which is called the peak operation. And the third operation, removing uh, elements from the stack, is called the pop operation. Peak and pop have a similarity in that they return an element from the stack. So when you re uh, get the uh, result of pop, then it will be the top ele element, and when you call pop again, it will be the next uh, uh, element on the, on the stack. So uh, let's make it a bit more uh, practical. Let's say we put on element A and B and C. Maybe later on we will use uh, strings in our tests. The last operation which is interesting, and is the, actually the operation that we will start with, is the isEmpty method. And the isEmpty method tells us whether there is something in the stack. If there's nothing in the stack, then is empty is true, and when there's nothing in the stack, then is empty is false. So the fourth, fourth operation is is empty. And that is what we will start with. Let's move back to our um, development environment, NetBeans IDE, like so, and simply start it. Have a bit of patience, of course, and then start making a new project. Take a bit, a bit of, uh, uh, pay attention, please, uh, and how I create this project. I'll create a class library because a stack in itself is not a program. It's just a component that you can reuse, and that's a good thing. That's uh, actually what you do quite often in object-oriented programming. But it doesn't make a program in itself, so we put it in the library. And we call that uh, library simply simple stack because I think it's a simple stack and simple is good. So let's uh, do that. And NetBees will make a project uh, for me with uh, no content. It, it, not, it doesn't even have any packages. It has only the default package. I want my, uh, my uh, library to have uh, packages and I s simply call the, the package a simple stack as well, which is uh, fine. And now, I'm not going to make a class yet, I'm going to make a test class first. Test class is called, is a unit test, and it's called stack test. test. Like so. And here you see uh, NetBeans create some additional stuff I don't really like and need, but I can uh, resolve that too. No copy. Uh, underscore simple stack uh, netbeans project uh, license header to simple stack netbeans project and uh, change a bit in the configuration here because I am a bit annoyed by, by this text ever and again and uh, <coughs> you see then I know when I make a new class I will have a, an empty uh, license header 
Now, this is my, uh, my stack uh, test. It already has a constructor. I don't need that, so I'll throw it out. When I need a constructor, I can re really easily, easily make one again, but I don't need it, uh, it yet. Now, we are, test, uh, we are the developing test-driven, TDD, test-driven development. Meaning you write your tests first, and you write your uh, the tests so that you have red before you have green. You must have a failing test before you can make an implementation. Uh, there are two kinds of tests. One is dynamic tests, that is you execute your unit tests, which should then become red before they are allowed to become green because there is a, a valid implementation. And also static tests. And static tests are tests without executing the code. And what, uh, what is a valid uh, um, static test is using the compiler. Yeah, so you see sometimes that uh, I accept red from the compiler and not red, not just red uh, or only red from a unit test. So let's uh, make our first test. The first test I'm going to uh, create is um, verify that or assert that when I create a stack, it will be empty because, well, there's nothing in it yet. So uh, that's uh, what I uh, what I want to do. Uh, to show you that I can make us one stack that can contain any kind of uh, elements, I'll make a, uh, a stack instance with both a string and a number, just to show this, uh, this thing, and also to make sure that I create a generic stack. So what I do is create a stack of a string, and I call that a string stack, is a new stack, and uh, diamond operations are uh, operators allowed. So this is uh, a new stack, and uh, that should be an equal sign or an assignment. And uh, I'll create this one and turn it into a stack of number. Or let's take a concrete number. Let's make it into a stack containing integers and call it in stack. And then we should have um, the two the two kind of stacks that I want to create. One that contains strings and one that contains integers. Now let's see what, uh, I have read already, so that's good. Static test says, well, there is no stack and this will also not compile and this will not compile. But NetBeans has help here. You can see that by this yellow bulb. Now if I click on it, it will, um, it will give me some suggestions. One of the suggestions is uh, use uh, Java Util stack, which is not what I want. Um, create a package, sorry, create a stack class inside the test package. That's also not what I want because that would make it part of the stack of the test and I want uh, business code or actual library code. That would be, it should go into the source packages. Let's choose the, uh, that element. And you'll see that because I uh, said to NetBeans that I want a stack with two kind of types in it, it not, not just one type but two types, it, uh, it creates a simple stack in uh, the default package, and that is also not what I want. Uh, so I'll, re uh, I'll reorganize that, and then um, make sure that it is uh, according to the standard I, I'd like to see. You also see, uh, if you look well, that there's a green, wa a, a gray wavy line here. It says those stacks are not used yet. That's not too, uh, too bad. It's fine for the moment. So let's uh, save this and make this into the kind of stack I want. Actually, I want this uh, stack to go inside the simple stack package and not in the default package. Um, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm to blame because what I did is I created a test package, uh, sorry, a test class without specifying a package, so it's put in the default package. So what I want is I want this, uh, this, uh, this, um, stack test to be in the simple stack package. Simple, simpler stack package. Refactor. Yeah. Uh, now you see that the uh, stack test can't find uh, the stack anymore. That's because this stack lives in the default package and it should be living in the simple stack package. So let's move that as well. Like so. And uh, if all is well, then NetBeans should be uh, satisfied. So we went from red to green, from red to green, or from red to no color and red to no color. So static, static uh, tests wise, this looks okay. Now, what I need to do is to make sure that both these stacks implement a method which is called is empty, 
And when I call it on a fresh tag, it should return true. Oh, this is a cert for that. Uh, Java assert true. Uh, and the message should be should be should be empty. And then uh, the instance, which is named instance here, is called the string. Oh, string stack dot oops dot is empty empty should return true. Well, after some very bad typing, you see that I have a red again. Uh, but uh, an admin has a suggestion. But I also want this test to uh, run also on the int in stack. So let's duplicate the line. Uh, string stack, oh, int stack should be empty, and string stack should be empty. So turn this into int stack. Yeah, that's a very old name that is known. And now NetBean says, well, there is no method is empty in the simple stack. So in simple stack dot stack in our stack. So let's uh, create one. That is, let um, NetBeans do the typing. And you now you see that I have a method which has a proper signature that is no parameters in, name is, is empty, and the return value is boolean. Let's, uh, let's uh, see what the tests now say. Okay, now NetBeans says this is okay. So the static tests say this looks good, I can compile it. Now let's run our first unit test. This is the first unit test that we have. Uh, doing that is uh, simply uh, using the GUI or proper or uh, implement uh, proper methods, and you see that I get a error not supported here message. I get a red test, and this kind of test, this kind of uh, error, is something that means well the test can't be run successfully. Yeah, well, even if the tests were written properly, I can't run it successfully. So what I need to do is make sure that there's a proper implementation here and this empty method. You see that actually the message that comes out here is the same message over there, not supported yet. And that's because this is what it means creates when it wants to make a new method. Because it doesn't know how uh, what we want, so we have to write in the implementation ourselves. It's about time to go back to the drawing board, but let's first ma very, make a very simple uh, um, uh, successful test by make this uh, method make this method return true and then well we make it very tri trivial we simply say we always uh, return true and then both our tests uh, will succeed that is both test in in this method and both assertions in this uh, this method so this is well else a bit iffy actually let's go back to the drawing board what we're going to make is an array based stack. An array is, as you know, is a, a data structure which allows you to contain, uh, with, which uh, can contain several elements. An, an array looks something like this. Say we have a four element uh, array, then there's four, four locations. And this is a data structure what we want to use for our stack. And I've or oriented the array in the vertical direction, and I also want uh, uh, the bottommost element to be at index zero. That is, index zero is the bottom of the stack, that is where you would put in your first element, and the topmost element would be uh, element three, if I have an array of, of uh, size four. Um, what I also have is that when I put an element in, in it, it's actually, um, uh, the element is actually a reference to um, the object I want to put in. So there would be an object, that I want to add to the stack, and that object, uh, that that object would be referenced by the thing that is put in the stack. So, and the stack contains a reference pointing to the actual object. Say that this is string a. If I put an other uh, uh, string on top, the string might be anywhere in memory. Let's say it's b. And what I actually put into the, in, the stack is the reference. You remember that. Now, what I must do also, also must do is add some administration to our implementation. That is, get another pen color, 
Let's see if this is any good. That looks good. What I also want to know is where our current top of the stack is. So now I have an element, a stack with two elements inside. And meaning that the topmost element is in this case simply in the string B. So this is the topmost element, which is actually index number one. Yes, when I have put two elements on the stack, it's index number one, zero, one. Now, question is, what happens if I have no elements in the stack? What should top be? By the way, I didn't tell you yet, but this top in my concept is an int, an int integer which can index in into this uh, this uh, array, and it's called top, meaning it points at the topmost element of the stack. Now the question was, what is the value of in of this uh, top integer when there's nothing in? Now let's uh, let's see what happens. If I take up of the bottom uh, the topmost element like this then the top should point to that element. If I take that one off, the top should point to that location because it's the next logical value. It should be so you go from one to zero to minus one. So an empty stack means that if I have no elements in the, in the stack, the top should be less than zero. That would be the condition for our as empty. Before we complete that, we, uh, we'll uh, make sure that we have an initial test which shows that this implementation, let's go to back to our design or to, to, our, um, to our implementation, this, this, this implementation is really bogus. Yeah, so add a test, not, not implementing it correctly, but add a test which shows that this implementation is bogus. Now how we do that, of course go back to our test, and that is we should uh, write a new test Oops, you have a new test methods that's like this, and a test uh, push uh, is not a uh, push makes not empty. Oops, there's something wrong here. A curly brace. That is my test. What I need again is to uh, to create uh, new instances. Well, actually, I don't like to type too much. Uh, and the reason is uh, obvious. I can't. So what I do is I make these two fields, in uh, these two uh, local variables inside the test method into fields. Yes. So they are members of the test stack uh, of the stack test class. And now uh, I know in this method that I can simply reuse them. Every time the first test method is executed, uh, these things are created, and then when I uh, execute the next te test method, a new stack uh, test class is made. So I can reuse these two fields. Now, what I can do now is I know that they are empty uh, when fresh. What I now do is simply um, add some element to it. Well, if you remember from the drawing, the element as adding something to a stack is the push operation. So we are going to test the push operation. Um, stack dot push. Sorry, string string stack dot push, and then uh, put an element on it, and the element would be a, as in the design, and then the int stack would also contain an element. Int stack would also contain an element, and which is simply value one. Now, yeah. again, NetBeans has an idea, has a clue, create a, a method called push inside uh, the simple stack. Let's see what it does. So now we have a push string. Well, and then it we uh, uh, we want an, an additional method which is called push of uh, an int, or and that's what uh, NetBeans does or suggests. Let's see now, create that method. Let's uh, see what uh, NetBeans created for us. Well, mm, this is not really what we want. So it's a bit off here. Let's repair that. What I actually want is not just uh, have T elements being, I want T elements to be put in. So 
uh, it doesn't care, it doesn't matter uh, what you put in, either an integer or a string, the uh, stack should accept that. So what I should do, I replace this, this uh, parameter type into a T, and then remove this, uh, this one. So that is what I now have. I push in a T. And uh, the effect of the operation should be that uh, the stack is, uh, is no more empty. So, so that false. One element, comma, and a string stack dot uh, is empty. That should be false now. And same for the int stack. Yeah, actually, uh, what I prefer is have one test per test method, but actually these tests are testing the same thing, the same method, so that is uh, fine by my standard. And this, this test push makes not empty, should now uh, be able to run, the compiler is satisfied, let's see what happens. You see that uh, again uh, we, we took the original implementation that uh, NetBeans provided for us, and it says, well, it's not, imp uh, um, it's not implemented yet. Let's go back to the drawing board. You see that we have an array-based stack. So the first field that we will introduce in our stack is an array, which can hold any kind of things. And the th second field that we introduce is the top element, which is an integer pointing at the top. No? No, that is uh, simple enough. So we need two fields. One field is an array of T's. Oh, an array of T's, and this array of T's should be uh, called have a name. The field should have a name. I typically call that storage. If I design stacks, then I call that storage because that is the place where you put elements. But it itself is not a stack; it is just an array. You could also call it array if you want. I call it storage. Uh, equals equals new, and then you should create an array. In Java, you can't create arrays of a generic type. The best you can do, and the nearest you can get to, is create an array, array that accepts any kind of reference, which of course is, as you know, an object array. So let's make it in an object array. The specification says, well, four, a size of four is uh, f just fine. But now you see I have a, ray, a wavy red line again, and it uh, that means let's see what it uh, provides for me. It says cast, make a cast operation, and that does the trick. So we had a red just briefly, and now I have a green again. Uh, of course, I should make this field uh, private because uh, nobody should uh, interfere with that. And the next thing I would need is a private int called top. And the initial value, or the initial value should be minus one as designed. Remember, as minus one when the top is when the stack is empty, top points at uh, location minus one, just below the stack, if you will. So, next, uh, now we can implement our push method. What should the push method do? Well, it should increment top and then then place element at top location. That's uh, the strategy. Tops, tops, oh, tops location. Yeah, now that's not too hard because what we're we actually saying we want to place into storage at the location where top is pointing at after incrementing it by one. Put your put your element there. So put, put your element there, and that should do the trick. That is, let's see, increment top, and when, after you've done that, use that location, so top points to the new top location, and place the element there. That is what our push operation does. Now I have a working push operation, let's see what, uh, what it does. It said, uh, fail one element, that we can look at the test, what the failing test is, and that is this one. This is this, uh, the string uh, stack, yes, and this is the integer stack. The, so the string stack says, well, it's failing. 
Why is that? Well, that's because this bogus implementation of is empty is actually not what uh, not not correct. It always returns true. So whatever you put in this stack, it will never be uh, not empty. It will always be empty. So we must repair that. From the design, have a look. Remember that we wanted um, uh, the top to point at minus one, and then it's empty. The easiest way to express that is to say if top, top less than zero, then return true. This, this is a so top less than zero. When that is uh, the case, then return true. Otherwise, uh, return false. By the way, this less than sign is a relational operation. It compares, it make, makes a relationship. Uh, test for two elements top and zero and it says top is less than zero then it's true otherwise this one is false so it's a boolean value this is a boolean expression and that is what is empty is all about return a boolean expression saying whether the stack is empty or not when I rerun my tests then I have my all my tests passing you see the two speaks of empty and test method and uh, maybe I should rename this uh, test method because that's not uh, the best name, of course. Uh, this one. Yeah. Test um, new uh, makes, uh, makes empty. I've changed my code, rerun the tests, and there you go. All tests um, run correctly. One fin final uh, improvement spelling test new makes empty. And then I have a test which uh, does the right thing. Of course, now we also need to make sure that uh, the other two operations which are uh, to be created, namely pop and peak, also uh, work correctly. So the next test I will want to do is uh, create a unit test, test that uh, tests the peak method. Now, um, you should remember that uh, every time a test is being run, you get a new instance of stack test. So every time you have two new fresh stacks. And that is uh, um, what, what, what happens. That is the way uh, unit tests are run. So when I don't push anything on the stack, they, it will be empty. Now, let's uh, simply uh, copy these two lines. Copy these two lines into our test. And then uh, what we should do is that uh, we should make we should verify that the topmost elements of both stacks are, have the correct value. Yes. So um, <coughs> how do we do that? Uh, we use the assert equals method. Java assert equals method. Um, then string test, and the expected value of the peak operation will be the string a. And then uh, string stack dot peak. Again, we are designing a new method. We'll get a red, and after that we get a green because the compiler creates something. And we do the same thing for the string uh, for the int stack. And of course, that will contain an integer value. Uh, uh, integer dot value of uh, no value of int of one that's what we pushed in so we should get uh, we should get um, an integer of integer back yeah now again we have a yellow bulb net means thinks that it knows what to do and it creates uh, one method here and again you get the same uh, issue here because what uh, peak does uh, what the uh, default implementation is well uh, for some reason it knows um, that it, it, we return an object, a reference type. So what uh, NetBeans guesses is that we want to return an object because that will fit both string and integer. We'll change this into T because this is a T stack, a stack of T's. And then what we do is uh, make an implementation, which is the simplest, just return whatever you like. In this case, I chose uh, uh, null. And you see now we have a running test which says the implementation is wrong. And the implementation which simply returns null. Yes, so uh, we have a red test. This is red, see? And we may make an improvement implementation. Well, the, impo the implementations were well, well, as simple as you can imagine. Because 
what you need to return is simply the element that is on top of the stack. That is, that element in, in storage that is located at the top. And that is what top is all about, pointing at the topmost element. And peak returns that same topmost element. So this should then return our element. Now, the last method that we need to uh, implement is the pop method. Implement, uh, test driven implement means write your test first, Peter. And uh, while you know I can't type, so I allow myself to be lazy. I do a copy and waste first, that I a copy lost, now uh, a lot. Now I do the same thing, I do an uh, operation. I do a pop, I do a pop here. And after the pop, the element should have, uh, should have uh, been removed. So what I should do is assert, uh, yeah, assert true, uh, now empty again, now empty again, yes, and then string stack is no, dot is empty, and then copy that line for the for the integer stack as well. Yeah, so that should be uh, okay. These are the tests that I want to execute, and the first test is um, uh, well. There's again a yellow bulb. And that means has an idea how to uh, Im improve this implementation, or rather. The uh, create an implementation. It says let's uh, make a pop uh, method and let's see, see what it created. And of course it's the same effect here. It returns uh, an object instead of a T. Yeah. Now, um, again make a implementation. That is what it should do is return the topmost element and then uh, reduce the top by one because the topmost element should have been removed. So what we do need to re, uh, return is a T. And we call that thing the result of the operation. And what, it, uh, what you can do is reuse the code that you already have. So you could simply use the peak method because we know that works. And when we uh, return that result, well, then we're almost done. But not quite. Let's see what happens. It says, well, you did return the proper value. Let's have a look. Um, sorry, in the test. You did uh, return the proper value, but it's not empty. That is, or not empty again on the string stack. It fails, and on the integer stack it also fails. So it, uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work yet. Because, well, the stack the stack didn't get empty after this uh, this push. So, uh, what shall we do? Or what should we do? Of course, we should clear up. That is, we should make sure that the element is removed. Now, I have to explain a little bit about a, well, rather difficult concept. It's about memory leakage. Let's go back to the drawing board. As you see in the drawing board, we have an array of stack which holds references. And if I simply decrement top, uh, saying, well, the elements above top are not no longer in the, in the stack, and uh, then return a value that is at that location, then that would be a, a, a proper uh, pop operation. But the references will stay on the stack. And now imagine that you have a stack in which you pu pushed a lot of things and then popped off a lot of things, and you have a stack that is, well, bigger than four. We'll come to that in a, a few minutes. Uh, but you never uh, push as many stack, uh, elements on the stack as you had before. That means that all these references might still be on the stack. And in Java, whenever an object is being referenced, it means that uh, it will not be removed by the garbage collector, however long that you, uh, the, the, the program runs. And if you do this uh, a lot of times and your stack is big, then there might be a lot of elements that are still on the stack and so are not considered garbage by uh, the Java virtual machine, and they will stay there forever. And if you do that a lot, you lose memory. 
And if you have similar data structures like this, then there will be elements that have no use for, for you anymore because you consider them not to be in the stack, but instead they are as far as the Java virtual machine goes. So every time that you remove an element uh, from the stack, what you must do is also clear out the position that you have. So you should override that position with a value. And in this case, the value that you should override with is the null or the nil value because that erases the reference from the stack so that the Java virtual machine knows that if say that element is no longer reference from this uh, stack because well the reference has been uh, overwritten by uh, null, nil then the Java virtual machine can say oh this is garbage so I can clear that out and if this is also nilled out then it clear, can clear that out this prevents memory leak prevent memory leak that is what it's all about okay let's go back to implementation what I need to do is after I've uh, uh, taken the element from the stack I should um, uh, clear out the stack position at the position top so storage dot at position top should be uh, set to nil or null whatever, whichever way you pronounce this like so so now we erase the element, like in we did this operation, this marked it out or crossed it out. And then we can return uh, we can return to uh, the element. But of course we should also decrement top because the topmost element has been removed and the element below that is now the is now the topmost element. So after um, erasing the element, we should also decrement the top element. And this is the way you do that. Uh, minus minus at the end means decrement after use and plus plus top means uh, increment before uh, top. There are uh, operations on both sides. So once we did that, that is we decremented the top, which also makes this come about, that is the make the empty test fail, we should, uh, we should see a green test. And you see uh, now all my tests uh, pass. In uh, NetBeans, I've installed um, uh, um, a plugin which is called uh, uh, TK1, which is about uh, Java coverage. And if I test this uh, program with uh, Java coverage test, then you'll see that all code in my tests, in my uh, implementation, is being executed. You see, everything is, uh, is green here. So that looks uh, very promising. Now, of course, we see we have a very, very tiny stack and there's no way to push more elements than four in. in. So we want our stack to grow, not just four elements. Now, let's, uh, let's uh, make that work too. So again, write the test. Test, uh, test with many. Uh, make it grow. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to test just with one stack. I don't need those two stacks anymore and the number stack. So I'll drop the number stack and I'll simply use the, uh, int the, the string uh, stack. So uh, what I do is string stack and then uh, push uh, an a, a string. Yes, and then multiply I'll apply that a few times. So. As long as I do it like this, assert false uh, string stack dot is empty, and this uh, test will probably uh, run OK. So this is a useless test because it hasn't been green yet. Let's make it into a, a test that makes things red. When I push a fifth element, well, let's uh, call them give these string things different a b c d d, d and e different values and run this test again you see it's uh, still green so it's a useless test now make this test uh, worth its uh, its typing by adding another element and then rerunning the test you see that it causes an error and if I look at the details of the array by clicking on this triangle, you see that there's an array index out of bound. Because what happens in this stack, in this current implementation, I write outside this uh, object stack, this, this, sorry, this array of objects. 
I'm trying to write at position 4 and that's, I can't do that. So what I must do is make sure that this stack can grow. Now, there are multiple approaches uh, to it, but the simplest is to make sure that before you try to push something on the stack, is you make sure that it uh, has sufficient capacity. Ensure capacity would be a proper method name. So ensure capacity is a method that I'm going to design, implement, and uh, when, that when that returns, then there is sufficient capacity to store the next element onto the stack. Now, NetBean says, of course, uh, there is no, no such method, so let's uh, implement it. And there's your implementation. Again, you see that uh, now my, all my tests, or many tests will fail. You see a lot of tests fail because ensure capacity is called every time I push. And now I must make a, a proper implementation. So I have a lot of red here. Well, this is, uh, this is the trivial red, there's no implementation. Let's make it a real uh, implementation. What should we do? What should the implementation to make this test run uh, all, be all about? Yes, it should make the, uh, the stack grow. Ensuring also means that you do a test first to see if there is any uh, uh, growth in the storage size uh, necessary. If not, then simply leave it as it is. Otherwise, you must grow your stack. So what we test is if Whenever I push, top plus one is less than the storage can contain. And what the storage can contain is expressed as the length, the length of the storage. How many elements can fit in this in, in our array? Go back to the design. In this array, it means you can store one, two, three, four elements. So the capacity would be four. If uh, top is a position at the position just before the last then I can still add another element and that is what this uh, expression is all about so then uh, I can simply return because I know well the condition to be able to add something to this tank is fulfilled I can still add another element if I do alt F alt shift F that is refold my codes you see uh, NetBeans introduces curly co uh, braces because that is how I configured it so that's okay now, if it's not sufficiently large, then what I should do is I should make a new storage, but remember the old uh, content. And there's a very simple method for that. The method is called, is, is inside the uh, utilities class arrays, and the method is called uh, copy of. So let's have a look. Uh, arrays copy of, and you see there are a number of copy of elements. You see that, well, uh, you can uh, create arrays of doubles, you can create arrays of floats, and hey, it happens to be that the, the method I need, in this case, is simply the copy of method, which gets a T, an array of T's, which is the original, and can specify the new length. Let's have a look. Copies this specified array, trunking or padding with nulls, and that is also what I want, because I, it should contain nothing, uh, and so on. And you can uh, read this, the specification uh, whenever you have time, and it's available since Java 6. So let's uh, select that one. And uh, well, what it uh, what NetBeans now guesses is I want to have a, a new value, and uh, top is uh, one of the candidate integer values that I have. But no, what I want I want to uh, grow the stack by two every time uh, uh, length is insufficient. So storage dot length is the size that I want. I want this storage to be twice as big. Yes, this is what uh, what happens. But um, if I look at the, at the Java doc again, let's uh, let's simply look at uh, let's simply look at the Java doc. There you go. It says that um, it returns an array of T's because it doesn't affect the original. It doesn't change anything in the original. You must capture or catch return value because that is the new storage value that will be the new storage that you want to define. NetBeans knows this, knows this because it knows that the raise copies of returns a new value. And if I click on this, it says assign the return value to a new variable. I won't do that. I simply say this will be my new, new value of storage. So like that, storage is 
the copy of storage multiplied in size by two. An array copy of makes sure that all the elements that are currently contained are also copied into the new storage. So storage will be overwritten. Now, if I rerun my tests, you see that this test uh, now uh, passes. And uh, if I want to measure how many uh, elements could, con could be contained in my, uh, my stack, I could uh, in introduce an additional method. This additional method, I call it uh, capacity, because it can tell you what the capacity of the, uh, of the stack is, it simply returns an in value, and that the in value will be the, uh, the size of the, of the storage uh, that I provided. But this is only for array-based stacks. Other uh, kind of stacks, like a link stack, there it wouldn't be that as useful. So let's uh, simply add this method, um, call it capacity. And actually, it is a method capaci capaci no, capacity, which is a method which is actually only needed for uh, for tests. Otherwise, nobody cares about um, such a method uh, to see if the stack grows. That is what uh, what uh, every user of a stack uh, accepts that it should grow automatically. And this is what uh, what uh, I do. This uh, capacity, so I can use this. Uh, test inside uh, my uh, test method. I can uh, say uh, assert equals equals for from a string stack dot capacity and uh, after it has grown by an element uh, let's push this down the capacity should be doubled and now I'm testing, I'm looking into the, the implementation. I know the implementation. I'm verifying that the implementation does what, uh, what, uh, what, what uh, is, what's it all about. Yeah, now the stack uh, is uh, getting uh, all elements. Now let's see if I can take the elements out again. Um, pop. It doesn't take a parameter. And that means we'll say, probably will say, well, you can capture the value. I don't care about the value. Uh, well, I do care about the value because I want to make sure that the elements come out in reverse order. So as uh, yeah, as it equals uh, top one, the first element that should come off is is e, and uh, the actual value is what uh, I pop off the stack. And then I need this thing five, five times. One, two, four, five times with different string values. E, D, C, B, and A all in reverse. Yep. And this would be in uh, two, three, four, and five. And after all these operations, then my stack should be empty again like so and you see that now all my five tests pass and if i run these tests with coverage test coverage then you see again that i have a fully covered uh, stack i think that's it for, for today i hope you learned a little bit oh well there's one uh, small detail now uh, this is a simple stack and you see this stack is a, a package private uh, uh, stack well it's actually better than that we can make, simply make it into public. And to make it useful for my clients, I want it to be, uh, I, I want it to have, um, let's, uh, it wa I want all the methods that I think are worthy for a real stack, that is the empty, the push, the peak, and the pop method to be public as well. So I have a proper class that I could put into a utilities uh, directory or a utilities package, uh, which is uh, very fine uh, by the, the standards that you would like to have. That's it for today. Bye bye for now.